Latte was in so much discomfort when we first got her, so I'm really excited to see her open her eyes without pain for the first time in her life. What's she doing? Is she awake? Yeah, she's starting to blink a little bit earlier. Hello. Oh, hello, oh, look eyes. At you can see her wow, eyes. Wow, you can see her eyes. <gasps> They're so bright. Oh, that's amazing. Hey. Is that your friend? Do you want to say hi to her? She just woke up. Get a few Put minutes free. Show them your eyes. <gasps> look at your eyes. Oh my gosh, she looks like a different dog. I really love doing tasks that have immediate results, like pressure washing or mowing the lawn. And so to have a surgery, have a before and after that quick, ah, it, it's like super, super exciting. It soothes my soul. It makes my OCD feel really great. Oh, oh. <laughs> They are so cute oh. together. She looks great. Everything went amazing here at Tannisborn Emergency Veterinary Clinic today. Good look part. at you it. You actually look like you know what you're doing. Once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Latte now gets to live a normal, happy life, pain-free. And there's appropriate things for puppies to put their mouths on, and then there's not appropriate things to put their mouths on, like this bracelet that he's trying to chew off. We would basically redirect with an appropriate item for him to put in his mouth. So, in, you know, when he can't see, it doesn't mean he can't learn. It just means we have to be responsible to view what he's putting in his mouth, and if it's not an appropriate item, then we need to redirect him and give him an item that is appropriate for him to play with. Good boy! No eyes, he can't see, but he can follow a toy just based off of scent and sound. <laughs> it's pretty incredible, actually. <laughs> Every single dog deserves to have a loving home, and blind dogs are no different than that. Just because they can't see with their eye doesn't mean that they can't feel love and give love. And blindness really doesn't stop that dog from having a great quality of life. This is definitely a process that doesn't happen overnight. It's not gonna happen instantaneously. It takes months, but the biggest thing is to have a lot of patience and reward. Just by using redirection techniques, we've finally gotten to a place that I can kiss him without him biting my mouth. Lauren is a director at the Hawaii Island Humane Society, and she is all about educating, advocating, and giving back to her community. So we adopted Pearl from the Humane Society when she was seven months old. She was born blind and deaf. She's a double Merle Catahoula. Yep, um, same, so, same yeah, These guys got the same thing going on. The Merle gene gives a dog the really cool, swirly kaleidoscope coat that Mai Tai has. But when a dog has two Merle parents, it can leave that dog deaf and blind. She's three now, and we've worked really, really, really hard with her on training, and she knows all sorts of cues, and we communicate with her through touch. Blind and deafness doesn't mean they can't learn everything another dog can learn that has eyesight or hearing. It just means that we have to train them differently. We have four dogs and she's better trained than all yeah. of them. So. She has a vocabulary of about like 12 different cues. So if a dog is deaf, instead of using sound, you want to use sight, you want to use smell. If a dog is blind, you want to use hearing, you want to use touch. If a dog is blind and deaf, then you want to use touch and smell. So it's really just adjusting our thought of what's normal, because these dogs are very normal. I want to see her tricks that you do with her. Yeah. Can you show me some of the things? Come here, girlfriend. Get up. Oh, so that's her. Get up. Her yep, that's her. Let's go. And that's uh, going to be a sit. Hopefully, there we go. Good girl. It's the battle of the Catahoulas, the double Merles. <laughs> She's never met another dog like her before, so this is special. Aww. You guys can be besties. Super scooty. This is your adoption contract. Yeah. But before that, do you know that you need to go get bathed because you're stinky? <sighs> Today is hopefully Super Scooty's adoption day. There we go. There you go. Just lay down like you're in a little hot tub. It is a very, very bittersweet day because this girl has earned a forever family. But I deeply, deeply love this dog, so it's gonna be very difficult to hand her off and watch her drive away. <laughs> Feels good, huh? It's relaxing. Let me see. You look super tough? Oh, super tough. Super Scooty just has this magic that like exudes and radiates out of her. It's literally impossible to be around her and not be super, super happy. She's endured a lot and she's overcome everything with grace. She's just one of those dogs that inspires you to be a better rescuer. 
You like the bass, don't you? They're really relaxing, huh? Nice and warm. You just kind of float. Don't have to do any effort, get a little massage. All right, one room left. I'm excited. So this is called Dog ISO. This is where we keep um, the adoption center animals and some, some medical cases. So, All right, uh, so what is behind door number three? <gasps> oh my gosh, you are so cute. He is a definitely a purebred Roddy. Yes. Oh, my fat face. I know. You look like you ate an entire hive of bees. <laughs> what? I love, I love you. He's so adorable. Oh, he's the cutest thing ever. Oh, my gosh. I've officially named him Kobe Beef because all I could think about was, like, this juicy, meaty cheeseburger you'd see on a commercial. And I just want to squeeze it. <laughs> Pitbulls, German Shepherds, Rottweilers are all examples of power breeds, and they're bred to use their strength to complete working tasks like guarding or hunting. Power breeds are a great fit for Panda Paws Rescue because they don't do as well in shelters and they're much harder to get adopted. I've owned quite a few of them myself, and I'm not afraid of them. I have a high respect for them, and I also understand the type of family they're going to need. <laughs> so he's uh, really? roughly about eight to 10 weeks. Somebody found him. Yeah, in the country. somebody found him and brought him yeah. to Dumped us. in the country, like, you know. So right. likely his eye popped out and they didn't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Central California is in crisis mode. We have animals that are dumped at nearly every street corner, every orchard, highways and fields, rural areas in the foothills. You know, to have Amanda on our team where we know if we have a major medical case, she's the first person I call and we know that we have that outlet. It just makes things so much easier. All right, Kitty, let's go tell everybody the news. Oh, are you excited? Ouch! Hi. Hi. She has medicine on the back of her. You smell like medication. So she is FELV, FIV negative. You 100%. can stay. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can stay. No. The options for her for a family just got much broader, you know? Yeah, they did. My room. She's not saying. My mom's gonna start going through the applications so she can get adopted, and she's definitely gonna see mine, either one or two or 500 different applications for me in there. So you wanna get Lapua and see what he thinks of her? Oh, you want me to meet a cat? Do you cat? want to meet a cat? I was really excited to come home and surprise the kids because everyone's been really good about washing their hands and being OCD about not letting Lapua be anywhere around the pterodactyl. Lapua, what do you think? She's like, what is that? I've only hung out with dogs. I don't know what you are. What is it, boys? Good boy, Kiki. I'm gonna laugh when Oh, she is at him. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good boy, She's Kiki. still hissing. Be. He is such a great dog. He's got tons and tons of puppy energy that I feel like he's just had pent up for the last year and a half of his life. Um, but he's also learning boundaries and he's he's learning his training on the road as we go. So Everly, come on, Everly. And go. Go get crazy. Yeah, get the zoomies out. Come here, Everly. You got it. Everly, you know, she comes from a pug mill. She's never really had good handling and good care. She's scared of physical touch. So I don't know, she's picking and choosing who she's trusting. She really trusts um, Patrick, one of our cameramen on the crew. I mean, seriously, look at, I don't know if you can catch that. You know, these are lives that we're dealing with and it's their lives come before anything else. Sweet Cupid, um, her movements are way better. She's standing for about 30 to 45 seconds, um, still shaking with tremors, but actually maintaining and holding her stance. You're doing so good. She's starting to build muscle in her back legs. She struggles with straight walking, and she always will, but she's already making huge strides in the last five days. Oh my gosh, look how cute that is, Bean and Cupid. They're snuggling. Good girl, you guys both have big barks. Big barks, yeah. yes, good. This is actually like incredible. I know. <laughs> if he's this close to another dog and not trying to murder. Have you ever seen him this close no, to another dog? No, never. I'm like blown away. I yeah. think this is so, such a positive sign. Yeah. You're getting it, buddy. Good girl. Do you want to play with her? You, you can play, play with her. It's OK. Before we got started, I was very nervous, very, very nervous that he was just going to run up, get in her face, be really aggressive. I am shocked. I am absolutely shocked about how well it went. 
I mean, I don't see anything, oh, like, yeah. alarming. You wanted a friend all along. I definitely am leaning toward we should ah. definitely adopt her, but I think we, we should talk about it, mm -hmm. you and I, and yeah, include absolutely. the kids in the conversation a little bit. Because it's a life and it's a Make commitment. Sure. Make sure it's the right thing for everybody right now. That was an epic success. Epic success. You know, we have all watched this entire love affair between Patrick and Everly from the very first day they met. He had like a little ping in his heart, and it's just now it's like ding, 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 ding. I'm gonna bring him to you. Yeah. Come here, my fat schnookums. Scooch. Oh. All right, so. We're just gonna jump right in here. Tomorrow he has a doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. This is his one month checkup where we were given a task to do handfuls of different physical therapies and work with him to try to get some sort of progress where he was not a, a danger to himself. I would really love to hear your input and thoughts. If I'm completely honest, there was, it was just, there was no progress. And he went backwards. Oh yeah. yeah. He's so frustrated. That's what probably hurts my heart the most. Yeah. I know we did everything possible. Yeah. Like I, I know for a fact in my heart oh, of hearts yeah, we didn't like, cut corners. Everyone likes the fact that we do major medical and special needs, mm -hmm. but we also do hospice, and that's a hard one for a lot of people, but yeah. that is a very big piece of what we do here. Yeah. And that's something that I'm really proud of us for having the compassion and the heart and the patience to do because hospice is hard especially with a puppy that should have a full 12 year plus lifespan. When we take these dogs that are hospice, to me, those are the best moments with an animal because we can ensure that their last moments are the best moments they've ever had in life. All right, guys, tomorrow's gonna be a really, really tough day, so. Or not. Well, why don't you get in all your snuggles, soak it up, just in case we do have to make that tough yeah. decision tomorrow. Be nice, thank Good boy, that's, that's good nice. Boy. See, that's nice boy. Everyone oh, said God. he was very snuggly in the car and I slept. And I mean, he's a lot of dog. He's gonna be a ton of energy, but he's healthy. He looks good. Oh, Garnet. <laughs> oh, he gives you kisses. <laughs> I wanna see him walk. I do too. Look he walks very cutely. Clinically, I noticed that he has a little bit of a shrimp back going on, but I think that's neurologic for him trying to counterbalance the front and left. He's a very tall, lanky dog, and I think that his front and back limbs are kind of shrimping the spine. Up, 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 up. You love it like Goody. Up, 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 up. Come on. Come here. You're so like, oh, he's like, oh, crawl. Come here. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> that's how I do every Monday. <laughs> Good job. As long as his front leg is healing fine, all he really needs is someone that can just appreciate that he's unique. And take patience yeah. with him. More patience. Yeah. You know, yeah. that he's just, he's a little special. 